two crack paintball uh, states in another video. It was our assaulter versus designated marksman versus sniper uh, video. Another good video, fam. Appreciate the good, uh, the nice comments at two crack paintball. Uh, at less that at less lethal for dummies states in the special purpose receivers uh, markers video. He says, uh, great videos. I have enjoyed watching them. If I can give one suggestion. If you could zoom in a little during the show and tell us just a little bit more detail, keep up the good work. I appreciate it. Thank you for the valid criticism. Uh, you know, as you guys can see from some of our more recent uh, how-to or modifying videos, I brought the videos in a little bit closer to show you guys the details. Um, I'll try my best, guys, but I'm not the most video IT savvy, okay? Uh, at the big channel 773, uh, this is on our head-to-head T15 versus M17 video, uh, states, could you make a video on setup and troubleshooting an M17? Yours almost sounds like a completely different marker than most M17 users experience. Excessive chopping of balls and misfeeds. Uh, I shot a video about that at the big channel 773. Go check it out. It has to do with the magazines of the M17s, right? Whether you're using the Gryzen magazine or you're using the you know uh, the original 15 uh, FSR magazines, the Gryzen round magazines, uh, the Gryzen magazine specifically, there's just so much imperfections in those magazines that it causes the rounds to jam inside the collar, and of course can lead to chops. Okay, so just go check out the video, modify those magazines, and then you'll be on your way to more reliable uh, first strike M17 use. But yes, I will shoot a video in the future showing how to set up the M17 so that way it'll be a reliable, high-performing marker for you guys, okay? Uh, at 2 Cracked uh, Paintball says on the how to set up your designated marksman loadout, uh, good information fam, keep them coming. Thank you so much at 2 Cracked Paintball, I will keep them coming. Uh, at Bad Boy Tommy 187 states in my how to zero your marker with the crossbow scope, says, well, you're not showing people how to sight the scope. You're only showing your footage of yourself shooting the rifle. Hey, I'll try my best uh, to do better, I guess, at Bad Boy Tommy, but I'm pretty sure I clearly states that, you know, you want to obviously uh, use the correct tools to adjust your velocity, and of course, use the optics uh, adjustment rings or adjustment uh, knobs uh, to make your adjustments in that video. Uh, I know it's a boring video. You just have to watch through it, but yes, if you have any uh, I guess uh, advice for me to shoot how you would like it to explain or if you have a question about it uh, Definitely feel free to comment in the future and I will answer those questions. Okay uh, at Maple House Knives 7178 and this is on the same how to zero your marker using a crossbow scope States that's a paintball gun Yes at Maple House Knives 7178 we are these are mag fed marker paintball markers Okay that's the whole point. We want to play with markers that look like real steel rifles. And so that's what we're trying to do at our company, guys. That's what we're trying to push and promote. Uh, at Toy Maestro states on the how to zero your MagFed marker and using a ladder video states, awesome video, thanks for the info. I appreciate that Toy Maestro. That's what I'm trying to do here, guys. If you guys have any other questions or concerns or comments, please feel free to ask them. And that's what I'm hoping to do is give you guys more information out there so that way you guys can get into MagFed Paintball, hopefully save money, don't go through the headaches, be able to shoot first strike, be able to expand on it and get the performance that you guys want, okay? And uh, zeroing your marker is definitely a must with first strike uh, rounds, okay? Um, at Makov8612 states in the can you start playing MagFed Paintball for under a thousand, it says, it doesn't take anywhere near $1,000 to play with MagFed. Once again, guys, watch the video, but I clearly stated that video, first strike shooting MagFed paintball. Okay, right? If you're playing just normal round ball, yeah, go get a Stormer, go get a TMC, just go get a base TIPX, right? You can get a marker for right around $300, $400, right? Shoot normal round ball, add a couple magazines, right? You're gonna be right around $500, $600 with the goggles, with the loadout, with the you know your your rig, whatever, definitely five hundred, six hundred dollars is definitely capable if you're just shooting round ball paintball, right? But when you start getting into first strike rounds, you're gonna start adding more of this cost to it because you're gonna want to increase the optimization, the performance, 
uh, with first strike rounds. And like I said, a lot of markers aren't first strike capable out of the box. As much as they say they are, they're not 100%. So, okay. Um, at La Eddie 2694, this is on the Ultra Shot M spec review. He says, paintball, dislike for me. Haha. <laughs> okay. I don't know if you're joking or not, but hey, hey, uh, you know, uh, like what you like, bud. If you like uh, Airsoft, it's your thing. It's all good. Uh, at Toy Maestro, this was on our how to set up our designated marksman loadout. He says, uh, awesome channel. Question. So if a DMR can shoot long range up to 100 yards, how far does a sniper marker shoot? Let's say the marker is a T-15 and not a SAR. So, guys, our markers are limited to 300 feet per second. The first strike rounds out of a paintball marker at 300 feet per second is all, they're all going to have the long range, right? The maximum range potential for the most part as any other marker, right? So whether you're shooting out of a T-15, an M-17, a TIPX with a freaking, you know, barrel threaded onto it, uh, an EMF, right? The maximum range is not going to change too much from one marker to, uh, to, to another marker. So I definitely want to put that to the test for you guys. So I'm definitely going to be shooting that video in the future when the weather clears up. I'm going to go out to the field and see how far we can shoot a paintball round and actually have it break as well on the target, right guys? And so hopefully we'll dispel that myth for you guys, all right? I'm, I'm predicting 200 yards, somewhere around there hopefully, right? Is the maximum range uh, of the first strike rounds, okay? Now, as far as the question at Toy Maestro of a DMR versus a sniper round, it's not the maximum range per se, that we're, 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 we're concerned of now. It's the accuracy and the precision at those ranges. That's going to be the difference between a SBM, a GPM, right, or a DMM versus a sniper setup, right? With the increased barrel lengths, with the different optics, with the optimized first strike rounds, we're getting our group sizes shrunk, short, you know, smaller, smaller, and smaller. So, it's not that the maximum range will increase, but the accuracy and the precision at the maximum ranges will be better with the DMMs and the sniper markers, okay? And so for, in our testing, the sniper markers have uh, just, you know, a slight advantage over the designated marksman markers in the further distance. You know, we're talking two, three inch smaller groups at the further distances, okay? Hopefully that answered your question. Uh, at Cal the Boom seven nine four four states in the uh, QDS suppressor review. He says, "What rear grip do you have on your gun?" So, talking about this marker right here, guys, our CAG four sixteen, and this is a Magpul MOE plus. Okay, it's their uh, MOE plus. I believe it's their K grip. Okay, guys, but yeah, uh, this is kind of the, the clone correct grip that was. Uh, uh, you know on this build okay guys but you know out in the wild there's obviously a lot of other grips that were used as well okay. all right uh next comment was on uh, by at solar of air uh this was on the not mag fed worthy the 468 uh from mcs review it says great coverage on this marker Maybe it needs improvements and refinements that the next gen T15 have. The big key on the 468 and on all the MCS markers, guys, here, this is it. It's the magazines. The D mags and the Helix mags just don't work with first strike rounds. They're just not reliable, right, guys? You know, go through all the videos of where I, sh I showcase and obviously tell you guys the solutions for the M17 mags and the T15 mags, you know? Unfortunately, the D-Mag and the Helix Mag has very similar issues, right? Whether there's edges, things that the rounds can get caught on, jam, or flip. And unfortunately, you know, there's no good solution for the MCS mags. They, they just honestly need to start a whole new magazine, right? Make a reliable magazine from the get-go uh, and test it, thoroughly test it uh, to get it to work reliably. You know, shoot thousands of rounds 
uh, through the markers, through the magazines to get them to, 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 sh uh, to shoot first strikes. And that will, uh, will you know, solve all the MCS marker issues. I'm, you know, besides some of the other stuff that I've, I've stated, you know, okay guys? But yeah, it's the magazines, right? Uh, Magfed marker, uh, this is uh, from at Slover and this was on the Can You Use Your Markers, Magfed Markers for Self-Defense. He says, Magfed marker or kitchen utensils? Well, once again, right, when we're thinking markers, we're thinking less lethal, right? We're thinking, hey, it's a deterrent. We're not trying to kill the assailant, although I know some of you guys out there are using, you know, more lethal rounds, right? And that's, once again, that's my problem. If we're going to use more lethal rounds, might as well just use a real firearm. But when we're ta talking about less lethal, right, rubber, paintball rounds, first strike rounds, right? It's totally different than using a knife, guys. A knife is considered a deadly weapon, right? A, uh, a marker just using normal paintball rounds, uh, although it can be deadly if you shoot them in the eye or something like that, I totally get it. It won't be considered a deadly weapon. But hey guys, I'm not a lawyer, I'm not giving you guys legal advice. I'm just letting you guys know that that's gonna be the stigma associated with that perception, right? So yeah, you know, if you're gonna use a knife, use something a poke, right? That's gonna be totally different than just using a paintball marker. Uh, at Solover, uh states in that same video, self-defense video, says maybe you should retype the libido to should you instead of can you. Obviously you can like any tool lying around the house, but the topic of legality and escalation is pertinent. As for ammo capacity, there are drum and box magazines as opposed to hoppers. Yes, yeah, like I said, you know, hey, you guys want to use magfed markers for self-defense? I'm not here to stop you. I'm just making a case that it's not the best tool for that situation, right? You know, a magfed marker is still going to look like a real firearm compared to just a normal paintball marker with a hopper. So, you know, you're, you're, you're giving yourself that potential that the law enforcement, even the criminal, will think that it's a real marker, I'm sorry, a real gun, and will react such, right? Whereas a normal paintball marker doesn't look like a real gun, right? If a criminal sees you know you shooting at them with a paintball marker, um, they're not going to mistake it for a real gun, right? Same thing with the police. Um, and then in terms of should I or can I, that was the whole purpose of the video at Solar to title that way, so that way, you know, to kind of like break that 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 barrier, like I, you know, that you're trying to say It's like we really, you know, shouldn't we can, but should we? I don't think it's the best tool for the job myself. Okay, um, at user EF1 uh, IJ7 WM6N states in the GSX uh, CS3 uh, compressor review uh, says, thanks for the review. I have owned the CS3 for one year, for a year. This one has 120 volt built in. I love it. Use it to fill several PCP air rifles and my three liter air bottle. I had a YH for a couple of years, but I got tired of the process, including the water cooled in a bucket uh, process when filling my tank. I gave it away and I've never been happier with a compressor. Also, I bought this on Amazon for $4.19 and got a three-year warranty uh, Three year warranty for $50. Highly recommend it. Yeah, I agree. I looked into those compressors as well at user EF. I didn't like the fact that if I had to load it up with water, cool it down, that GX uh, CS3 pump was super simple, right? Just plug it in, hook up the wires, ready to go, right? Cool. I agree. That's a great, uh, great compressor. Um, at Toy Maestro states on the how to zero your microphone marker using the backup iron sights. It says, great video. I didn't know there were different kind of first strike rounds. I thought only FS made those rounds and should be the same. Yes. Yes, Toy Maestro. Like I said, full disclosure, first strike is the only one that makes the FSR rounds, guys. But like I was telling you previously, there's a lot of inconsistency, a lot of variance within the first strike rounds. In a case of 600, like I was telling you guys, you know, about roughly 100 rounds is not what we would consider a match grade. Uh, and then the rest of the rounds, you know, they're going to be have different metrics in terms of size, shape, weight, and all those things. And so, you know, it's going to lead to, of course, different precision, different groupings if you use different metrics with the different rounds. Okay, guys. But yes, that's what my show. No, they are just first strike rounds. Uh, we don't make them here. Okay. Uh, at Lumi's Trees uh, states in the top five things you'll need to shoot first strike rounds, he says, uh, he, they ask, 
What is your opinion on the MCS conversion kits, the Hurricane specifically? Do you find them reliable? Okay, at Lumi Streets. I'm gonna repeat this once again, but of course, uh, you know, definitely ask questions, guys. Unfortunately, those kits work with round ball quite well, but they do not work with first strike rounds, okay? And it comes down to mainly, once again, it's the MCS magazines. Whether it's the D-Mag or the Helix magazines, they are just not reliable with first strike rounds, okay, guys? And so, uh, are they great conversion kits to get, you know, your X7, your A5, you know, your non-MagFed markers to start playing MagFed now? Yeah, it's a great way to kind of affordably get into MagFed, but they just don't aren't reliable, guys, with first strike rounds. So, you're going to end up spending money, and then, like I said, you're going to be limited, and then you're going to end up having to buy an EMF in the future. You're going to have to buy a T15. You're going to have to buy an M17. Uh, I've gone through all the process. Hey, you guys take my word for it now, but I've gone through all the process of trying to make those mag those marker conversions work with first strike rounds, and I couldn't get them to do it. But hey, if you guys want to spend the time out there, you guys have videos or proof that they do work well. If you guys modify them, hey, share it with the community. Uh, you know, that's all. That's what we're about here. You know, just pass this information to make MagFed uh, uh, paintball more reliable with first strikes. Okay, guys? Okay, at Chris, 8, 8, uh, 1887 states in the MCS MagFed conversion kits uh, where I, you know, I stated that they're not reliable. Uh, what shall I, uh, shall I exactly comment before I watch this video? Smiley face. Hey, bud, hey, at Chris, 1887, start asking questions. Guys, comment. If you guys have questions out there that you guys want me to answer in a future video, uh, definitely uh, ask away, okay? Uh, at Love My Trees, uh, uh, stated again in that uh, conversion kit video, guys, says, thank you for the video. Appreciate your honesty. Yeah, guys. Hey, uh, I'm only going to tell you guys what I know, what I've experienced. Full disclosure, I'm not going to try to sugarcoat anything. Um, I'm cool with some companies, like I told you guys, but I don't have, you know, I'm not here to try to to boast their products if it doesn't work well, guys. You know, if it doesn't work well, I'm gonna say so. If it works well, uh, to a certain point, I'm gonna say so, right? If it, if it works really good, I'm gonna tell you guys that, okay? Uh, at Joseph Sub SC9620, uh, replied to At Love My Trees, says, please take what he says with a grain of salt. Watch Nightmare Paintball and use his 468. He has the op experience. At, at Joseph, sub BC, 9620, actually, I 100% disagree. If you actually go watch Nightmare Paintball's 468 review, in his comments, he clearly states that the 468, he did, uh, he stopped using it because it doesn't work with, uh, work with first strike rounds. Right in the comments, he says, "Hey, you know, I I kept trying to play with first strike. I was going through you know hundreds of rounds, and it just wouldn't work." So once again, guys, the four six eight MCS markers, they just don't work with first strike rounds. Okay, so yes, round ball, rubber balls. Hey, they work fine. You guys want to play just normal paintball with round balls? Go ahead, go away. But like I said, we're about first strikes. We're here to push first strike rounds. Okay. So yeah, four, six, eight, no go on the first strikes. Um, at shotgun pipe uh, underscore four, six, five states in the ultra shot M spec uh, site review he says, so would you recommend the M spec or would you recommend the R spec? Truthfully guys, I would probably recommend the R spec for our gameplay over the M spec. Um, the M spec has a little bit more military features, right? It has the uh, parallax settings, uh, the red dot with the you know 65 uh, MOA ring, um, the the FDE color, so it you know it has some features that the M stands for military spec. So there's some features that the military would would have had requested on a on a similar right site to make it military quality, right? The R spec, uh, one of the clear things, for example, the M spec has night vision capability. The R spec doesn't. So. Like I said, I think the R spec would be a better choice. It's more affordable. It's still good quality. You know, SightMark makes good quality sites, uh, and it doesn't have night vision. But hey, maybe one of these days we'll play a night vision game. But you know, for the majority of us, right, we don't play in night vision. So I think the R spec would be a great choice. Okay, at uh, at Shotgun Pipe. Uh, 
Another comment from at, Vir at Avi Spira, and this is from the MCS Magbed uh, Conversion Kits video, guys, as well. Uh, states, uh, respect for making this video and your thoughts. i just wondering if you have ever tested and tried specifically the MCS Hurricane MKP2 conversion kit. Okay, so if you're asking me specifically at Avi Spira, I have not tried the MKP2 conversion kit, right? So... When I was using the Hurricane, the A5 conversion kits, they were the first, the earlier generation conversion kits. Okay, guys, so maybe they've done something to improve the look, the quality of those conversion kits. But I will be honest with you guys, those old school conversion kits, quality-wise, worked well. Once again, the problem is first strike capability, right? The magazines... Right? They're still using the same D-Mag magazine. They're still using the same Helix magazines. Those magazines will not work with first strike rounds reliably. Okay, so even if you get the full Hurricane marker, right? Not just the conversion kit. You just buy the Hurricane conversion marker just right off of the bat. You still have to use those magazines. And those magazines, unfortunately, like I said, I hate to say it, they're trash for first strike rounds, guys. Okay? Uh, last comment. Okay, we finally got to the last comment, and it is by at Toy Maestro, uh, and this was on our Lapco T15 rifled 14-inch uh, barrel review, uh, and the states at Magfed Ranch Paintball Ranch. What about the Lapco T15 14 and a half inch .686 inner diameter uh, barrel? Would it be the same length? I'm looking for a true 14-inch barrel. Okay, guys, um, this is my issue with Lapco's barrels because the the way the barrel fits into the T15 receiver, guys, it has kind of like this L slot where it slides in and then it obviously uh, turns and locks into place. Uh, first first uh, detent will be for the MagFed and then the second detent will be for the hopper adapter, guys. And so because of this adapter that they need for it to fit into the receiver, it's about two inches of length. That is technically not the barrel length, okay? And then of course the tip, they include the tip, uh, whether that's just the thread protector or if it's you know their muzzle device, whatever muzzle device that they, they include with the barrel, it's an extra inch and a half or two inches. And so like I stated in the 0.683 barrel review that we reviewed, that 14 inch was actually technically a 10 inch barrel, right? Like I was telling you guys, it's actually on this marker right here. And as you'll notice that it's similar to all the MR18 builds, the 10 inch hammerhead barrel builds that we did, right? So the 14 inch barrel, because of this adapter and because they include the, uh, the, 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 the muzzle device, which is an extra inch and a half or two inches, you have to eliminate that to actually get the actual barrel length. So my guesstimate at Toy Maestro, it's going to be somewhere between 10 to 11 inches, okay? Because I'm on their website right now and with that barrel, they don't have a muzzle device but they have kind of like a thread protector. And so that thread protector, I get, I, my guesstimate is that it's not gonna be as long as a muzzle device. So let's say it's just an inch instead of two inches. Uh, so if you take that one inch and then the two inch for the receiver adapter, you minus the you know three inches from that 14 and a half inch that it's supposed to be. My guess is that that barrel is probably in an 11 to an 11 and a half inch barrel, truthfully. So. That's my problem with the Lapco rifle barrels, guys, because they add these other distances. It's not a true 14 inch barrel. So at Toy Maestro, unfortunately, if you want a true 14 inch barrel, like uh, to imitate our uh, M4A1 SOP mod build or our URGI M4A1 build, like you have here, right? Like I have here. These are true 14 inch barrels, right? You're gonna have to use the hammerhead 14 inch barrels uh, with the uh, Lapco adapters, right? With the uh, first strike adapters in the rear. But this will make it a true 14 inch length, okay? To get that build that you want, okay? 
So hey guys, if you guys like this video, subscribe to the channel, smash the like button, and please comment because I will react and uh, and obviously answer any other future comments or questions you guys have. Okay, check it out guys next time. Peace.